Alright, what's up ladies and gentlemen, check for this play, Sonic Unleashed Part 32. We are here in front of Professor Pickle talking to him, and this will be the wrap-up video. I'm going to show off all of the uh, the rest of the souvenirs. I'll, I'm going to buy all the souvenirs for Professor Pickle, give them to him. I will show off the art books, records, and uh, music, uh, the art book, the art books, records, and I'll, I'm not going to show the individual cutscenes, but I'll just show the ones that I've acquired. I'll show all those off. I'll show the uh, the options and talk about talk about some of the less known trivia and some of the differences between the Wii PS2 version versus the Xbox uh, 360 and PS3 versions. So here we are. I'm going to hand over some souvenirs. Uh, hand hand over this, hand over all the souvenirs that I've collected. A lot, all of these souvenirs that I have collected, except for the Ginny doll, uh, the Ginny doll, have come from a uh, Wintos. I believe there is one more that I haven't bought yet, which is a lace, um, like a lace tablecloth. And if I haven't bought that one, or I haven't, or if I already haven't given that to one Professor Pickle, I'll just cut till I find Wintos. Wintos is pretty hard to find. And then I'll uh, just come back here, and you know you won't miss you won't miss anything. <laughs> but anyway, so here goes this Fragonian glass. Why? Oh, thank you. Let me. You do. Your daytime romp through rooftop run puts you past a cafe, does it not? Well, that cafe house is a secret passage that leads straight to a shortcut. Ho ho! Are you impressed? Shh, don't tell anyone else, though. Hmm, never noticed that one before. Why? Oh, thank you. Let me give you a little hint in return for your trouble. I've heard. Word that one of the Missourians, Kwame, is in somewhat of a bind. Until that's resolved, I fear he may be quite too busy for anything else. Even if that Saul, anything else should involve his dear daughter, Anna. I don't know. Oh, okay. Here, take this. It's a moon medal. Not that you should feel okay. Uh. Well, I think you. I recommend you complete the mission for Shanann's herbalist, Zonshin. Doing so will spread the doctor's name through uh, enough to reach a distant student. That student, in turn, may just lead you on a new adventure. Ho ho. So yeah, these, I, I'm, I'm gonna guess these are the the point in the game where he starts to try to give you hints about the missions. Art book. Oh. Thank you. So once you've got put the chill on that nasty eel, you'll have a chance to attack. Don't be hasty. Come on too strong, and it will thaw out quick early. First wear it down with some lighter blows, then plot the big guns. Okay, that's actually something I didn't know. I hear young Shadi from Shamar has his heart set on becoming a singer. As I recall, there was a young person in another city with similar hopes. Spend enough time with Shadi and you may just see the two meet up. Alright. Uh, Miss Anna in Missouri seems eager to leave the nest in search of love. One resident of EC was something of an expert in this subject, if I recall. Perhaps we, we can all pick up a few pointers while helping them out, eh? I'd almost forgotten here. Take this. It's a moon medal. That's pretty cool. He's giving me moon medals now. Uh, are you making good use of the light speed dash to nab lines of rings? I think you'll find a shortcut in Empire City if you do, my boy. Wherever you see rows of rings, keep a lookout for a chance to save time. Which is actually a very good hint, uh, especially through the daytime levels and just the missions in general. Uh, there are nice locations for Don Faccio's hot dog chain worldwide, or nine locations. Combined, they offer a whopping four different tri four different trial mission types. Now, whether anyone is really capable of besting them is another question. Uh, okay, so I uh, will review previous souvenirs. Okay, so it seems like we're missing one for Apatos. One possibly from... Shamar, and it looks like all of them from Robotnik Land. May have to go and buy them from the robot there, so I'll I'll do that, and then I'll I'll go to I'll go to Eggman Land. Oh, I guess I charge him, which is pretty much useless now since we've already done all the exorcisms. But it is definitely very useful to go ahead to go ahead and get as many flashes as you can before you do the exorcisms, it'll save you time, and you don't have to keep running back to the professor to fill them up, especially if you only have one or two, uh, definitely suggest going after the, all, all the flashes you can, I believe you can have six six in total, ACI. Uh, sorry about the cut, I figured it would just save a little bit of time, going 
going here to Robotnik Land. Anyway, you can see that's through the nose where you can go through the shortcut and all the crap that is Robotnik Land, anyway. Uh, so, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and show off a few things. Uh, there's not just the hub world. Whoa. So I guess that's all he says. Uh, you can actually talk to them. You cannot kill them, but you, you know, you just talk to them. There's only three here in the main, the main uh, hub world area. Bzz, I have only just been made. I have much to learn in order to improve my cognitive progress, progressive pro processes. Please converse with me, sure, why not? Well, let us begin. Bzz. Well, talking with you has been ent entertaining. So, and you can see. You you have three different things you can you can say say to him and that will pr help him with his uh, cognitive process. That'll help him kind of grow up and mature, I guess you could say. Well, you can see it's fun for me to uh, liar and thanks. Well, I'm just gonna you know pick one at random. Ah, yes, I understand exactly how you feel. We're a lot alike. You're a good guy. No, you don't. A lot alike. Next week I'm. Being assigned to the Sonic Interception Squad. Good luck. Don't work too hard. I would like to travel someplace far away. Want to go for a walk? Take a trip overseas? Ah ha ha! That was really funny. Yeah. Well, actually, I am the one who ate your pudding. That's okay. <laughs> Hack. Mm, what is it? What do you think of me, honestly? You're a good guy. You don't interest me. Uh, you're norm. You're uh, you're normal. Examination complete and now analyze the conversation. I have con reconfigured my personal life so we can be friends. Oh, yeah. I am Eggman Fighter. I will not lose to the likes of Sonic. Nobody can stop my fighting spirit. How is that? Does that suit you? Now, can we be buddies? So you can go through and talk, to, talk with, to him with different things. I'm not going to show every one, but just to, just to kind of show you what, uh, what you can what you can do. Alright, so you can buy a photo frame, a hip frame containing photographic proof of how cool Eggman Land is. So you can see Social Butterfly talk to everybody in the in the world. Thanks, I got that one. Uh, according to my super sale system, that'll be 100 rings for one. What else is there? What is there? Something else you need? The, you want some official Dr. Eggman merchandise? Each of these products is approved by Dr. Eggman himself. Replica of Eggman Lens National Flag and the inspiring symbol that adorns it. Alright. A balloon with Eggman's mug on it. Carefully, don't let this one get away. <laughs> Alright, uh. Eggman poster. A candid shot of Eggman signed, of course. Well, you know, of course. You, so that's how all posters should come. Si uh, should come. Egg goggles. The goggles Eggman always has on for ages 3 and under. <laughs> Uh, and then you can just see some food here. Egg candy, a sweet treat with Eggman's face on it. Careful you don't drop it and break it. Eggman's favorite chili dog is positively scrumptious. Pop an acorn, popcorn for a light snack. Eggman munches on it all the time. Egg puff, Eggman Land's top seller with a yummy cream filling. Egg exquisite lunch, an Eggman Land special. Every item on the plate is divine. Hard book uh, 71, we'll go ahead and buy that. Follow here. Uh, videotapes I won't buy just because those are all the cutscenes uh, you can see here. Congratulations, planets in, spreading darkness, the score settled, save the speech, always. Uh, the records versus Egg Dragoon. Uh, Super Sonic versus Perfect Dark, Perfect Dark Gaia, and versus Dark Gaia. See record uh, for Super Sonic versus Perfect Dark Gaia. No, keep up the good work. Come back again sometime soon. All right, so I will try one location. Uh, if if Wintos is not there, I will cut until I have already found what I need to from him. There are two things I need to find: one from Apatos and one from Shamar. If I can't find him, I will. Uh, well, you know, there's no way around it. I have to find him, but. Uh, I will go ahead and, oh, let me see, he hasn't been in Aftos for a little while, well, well, I guess I'll go ahead and go there and see if he's there. Uh, you know, there's really no, as, as, as I've said before, with Wintos, there is no set in stone way to figure out where he will be at any given time. 
The only thing you have to do, the only thing you can do is just to wander around and hope you see him. Here, he will be all the way in the back, right behind the ice cream vendor. Uh, not directly behind him, he'll be, he'll be about over in this section. So, since he's not here, I will go ahead and uh, cut, and then I'll just come back when I see him. So, see you in a second. I uh, haven't found Wintos yet, but because I'm here, I have in uh, Spagonia, I figure, figured I'd go ahead and show this off. The bookshelf and the gramophone here are here in Spagonia, as well as I believe the record. Well, I believe it or not, uh, the record player, or the, uh, yeah, the record player. Or I think it's called a stereo. Is in Shamar. I believe I've already bought that. But now yeah, you can see the bookshelf, 300 rings. That's the only way you can re uh, look at the artwork that you've collected, and. Uh, the gramophone is the only way you can, that you can listen to music. An old but not forgot, an old but not forgotten device. It will be delivered to the professor's lab once you pur purchase it. All the items that you buy here will be brought to the Spagonian lab here. Uh, record. I'll just go ahead and show these off. I'm not going to buy them. Spagonia night, Spagonia, uh, Spagonia day, Sp Spagonia night, back to normal. Uh, Art book 69. So figured I'd just figure I'd show that off really quickly though, just to make sure I don't have to. Uh, Cut again. I'll look around here for Wintos. Hasn't really been in Spagonia all that much as as well, and it still doesn't look like he's here. So, oh, well, that's a pretty handy way to get back to the beginning. All right. So, anyway, figured I'd just show that off. See you in a second. Alright, so welcome back. I had to buy the lace tablecloth for 400 rings from Wintos. The description of it was a handmade tablecloth carpet. I had to buy from the Shamar store, which was priced 320 rings. It said, uh, uh, something made by a master, cost an arm and a leg abroad, or something like an arm, or something like that. Anyway, so, lace tablecloth. Uh, Sonic, my boy, have you noticed the pose colors and tells a stage tornado? Defense correspond to patterns and quirks in their movements. Speaking of colors, gold helicopters are bonuses wor worth quite a few points. God, I almost forgot here is uh, uh, here take this art book. So that's uh, something useful to look out for. Have you heard talk of Chunan's Shui Fan, my prickly young friend? A little bird told me he was once a master martial artist. Surprising, eh? Ask him enough times and he may just teach you with a trick or two. Here, take this moon medal. Uh, we did get that last moon medal that Professor Pepper gave me was enough to push me over, or to push to put me at right at 120. So I do have a level seven moon medal if I need it. Uh, photo frame. Why? Right, thank you. When you face the egg lancer and Adabat, even should you fail with the reaction plate, don't despair. If you use the airborne springs wisely, you can avoid falling into the river. So don't lose hope, my boy. No matter what. Ah, that's actually pretty useful. I did not know that. Why? Right, thank you. Let me give you uh, Eggman's ultimate weapon. The Egg Dragoon has two critical weak points. It can be quite a bear to land attacks on the, the top most weak spot, but the damage payoff is that much greater when you manage to connect. Here, take the Sun Metal. Egg Balloon. Uh, the Beast Plaguey Missouri has some quasi rather than jump them and use a homing attack. When they open up, they'll do more damage by charging forward with a sonic boost. Fortune favors the bold. Didn't know which beast that was its record. Uh, robotic poster. The number one nasty in Shamar can be defeated rather straightforwardly. Place larger, heavier key cubes atop the blue pedestal first. Sounds simple enough. But each time you place a key cube, your foe becomes tougher and more violent. Things may turn ugly if you leave a heavier cube for last. Okay, so he's talking about the boss there. Why, thank you. You have to contend with this fish's sideways lasers in Spagonia. A word of, of advice, the fat end of that laser is much easier to slide under than it is to jump over. Perhaps less intuitive, but true nonetheless. I'd almost forgotten. Here, take this. It's a videotape. Not that you should feel. Alright, so that's all the souvenirs we can give him. So that does it for all the souvenirs. Uh, you can see here's a TV that you have to buy in Shamar, and this that you can listen to music in as well. I'll take a look. At, since, since I'm already here, I'm going to take a look at the, the TV. You can see I'll, I don't have every single cutscene, but a lot of them you can find in the, the adventure fields. A lot of them you have to buy from the stores. I'm sure a lot of these that I haven't bought, you can buy from the stores. And you also get some for from uh, Professor Pickle. So see the listen to the music here. Uh, you can also play. The, you can also listen to the records here. Uh, find them during the day stages. 
and you can buy them as well. You see Sonic vs. Spurt for Dark Guy that we bought earlier. Holoska Knight and Day and Result Screen E rank. Stage clear. And so now we will head to uh, Spagonian. We'll take a look in his lab, in that or in that lab. There is a pretty useful trick to getting back to the Spagonia lab once you're when you're in the uh, world map. All you have to do is go or pause the pause the game. And then you'll see a go to lab, uh, not not like not like an icon, but a a text says that says go to lab on the a pause menu here. Well, you go to the lab, it'll enter the lab. Yes. However, it will take only take you to the Spagonia lab. It won't take you to the uh, the Shamar lab, which you need later. You know, early on in the game, the, the first part of the game is a lot easier. It's having to travel through Spagonia, but Sadly, you can only do it here. Here's a TV here as well, so if you want to, you can uh, look at the events as here. That's the encyclopedia, data archives, directory, bestiary, data archives. We'll take a look at those really quickly. Apatos. Let me see. Uh, this is all. This this will all be concept art. This is what you can find in the art books. Is uh, concept art. See all the different uh, concepts for the different levels here. Uh, Apatos, no, that's Apatos, Apatos, Spagonia, Shunan, Robotnik Land, the place that uh, Professor Pickles held captured, or captive, his lab, the opening cutscene, opening cutscene, the Apatos people, more of the Apatos people, the, one of the students, one of the Spagonian students, the uh, headmaster, the another one of the Sp Spagonian students, S uh, several of the male students, the uh, grandson of Zanshin, Zanshin himself, uh, a few of the Missouri Missourians, the woman in Holoska, Jari Pika. The Shamar people, you can definitely see there's a lot more people in Shamar than most of anywhere else. The little girl from that, uh, from the missing sister, the st uh, exchange student, the store owner in Adabat, Professor Pickle himself, uh, his lab assistant. I believe that's the Spagonian one. You can see all the different ones that they have, except his, the last one on the bottom right is supposed to have red hair. I guess he was supposed to have uh, blue hair, or uh, yellow hair at one point. That is a spike, uh, thunderball, egg blizzard, the big mother, uh, dark eel, I believe, or Gaia eel, the moray eel, and the little eel that attacked us before, Perfect Dark Gaia, and so there you go, I only have 71 of those. We'll, uh, directory, we'll take a look at people you've met in Apatos, so, Milos, the kind and courteous owner of the surf Surfside Seagull Sundries, it's been three decades since he opened the gull, but not much has changed, Milos still lives the same peaceful life, he loves to gaze out at the water as the sea breeze blows by. Lambros, the finest sailor in Apatos, the sea is his life. Every boat, his mistress, he spends most of the year out at sea. Despite his appearance, he is strong as an ox and gruff, uh, gruff as a grizzly. Lambros is quite a loving father. Lam Lambros's son, a wild, unruly boy, Alexis, hardly ever sees his father and can't help but miss him at times. Anastasia's Husband, an 80-year-old man who's in absolutely no rush to hit 81. Eric believes himself to be the, to be very in tune with his wife and helps interpret her murky mumblings, but sometimes, but something always seems to get lost in translation. A mild-mannered elder of Aphtos, whose honesty and integrity have in, earned him the villagers' trust. He does tend to be somewhat of a worry wart, though lately concerned for the planet and the villagers has kept him up at night, leaving him a bit bleary-eyed. A sailor with a distinctive chuckle who also happens to be Lambros' accomplice to see something 
about that chuckle reeks of secrets, but maybe it's better to the that way. Some secrets the world just isn't ready for. An elderly lady whose greatest joy in life is to travel from country to country and rub noses with people who live there. She's always willing to share stories from her inter international adventures. Rumor has it Sandra's day job is running a large corporation. Not bad for an old gal. Uh, Lucas how, is one of those storylines that progress, uh, one of those NPC storylines that progress as you go along through the game. He is actually the father of uh, Mauro, that boy that, that we met at the beginning, who hangs out at the beginning of Spagonia, who wanted us to pay his respects. We'll see him in a moment. Uh, and also gives the hairdressing lady a hard time. Anastasia, Eric's wife, talkative but toothless after misplacing her dentures. Her husband usually steps in to interpret her attempts at speech. Anastasia's Anastasia has her husband thoroughly convinced she is a gentle and modest lady, but the jury's still out on that one. A cheerful cone slinger who claims to sell the world's tastiest ice cream. His latest creation in the quest for perfection, Apatos Seaweed Sherbert. Every quest is, it has its bumps along the way, it seems. Yeah, no kidding. The manager of Don Faccio's Hot Dog Mega Franchise is Apatos location. He's got more gusto than anyone else in the biz and whips up a mean dog t tinged with a refreshing hint of fresh mint. Uh, Gigi, chef at a well-established restaurant popular with students that also that has been in his family for three generations. He fills his, day, his days by energetically searching for new menu items but leaves the rigorous taste testing to Barbara. Landlord of the student apartment building, Otto has an uncanny knack for pegging which of his tenants has a thing for whom, but sometimes all the love in the air leaves him a bit choked up for his own youthful romances. Gigi's wife, who lines the dining room to, to this day, her cheerful smile continues to draw the customers in. Of course, Barbara also helps taste test Gigi's newest cul culinary c creations, and the rigors of the task over the years have made her girlish figure a thing of the past. Ippolita's grandmother, who keeps her hat on so tight that very few get a good look at her face. Irma's hobby is hat making, and she happens to be quite good at it. Sadly, though, her charming chef. Hey, chef, meh, whatever. Seem to be meant for one head only of hers. The owner of Joseph's and not a terrible, terribly creative thinker, as the name of his shop surely implies. Recently, Joseph realized he didn't have enough hobbies outside of work, so he took up jogging, painting, and photography. None of these endeavors lasted very long. Mark Antonio, all, uh, though he seems aloof and cool, this dandy actually s sports an interesting ability. He's also single at the moment. Uh, Sissio, I believe, Natalia's husband, a talented shoemaker for 20 years. He's fussed over every instep and insole. Not long ago, Sissio heard about wondrous shoes that turned their wearer into a speed demon and would, get, would give anything for a peek at them. Proprietor of a beauty salon, she's famous in town for her novel hairstyles and prides herself in always being able to spot the latest fads. Since laying her eyes on Thonic, Denise has been sighted carting home armfuls of moose, what could she be planning? Owner of a Spagonian jewelry shop, this lady of leisure loves two things, elegance and beauty naturally. Uh, Ada considers herself a paragon of both, which would explain why her room is pl plastered with pictures of herself. A former supermodel whose looks could floor anybody, she's still a beautiful, a loving mother too, and a source of strength for her shoemaker husband, Nat Nat Natalia makes a mean cheese pizza. Franco Frederica's cousin and also a friend of Raimondo since they were little. He lives in the student dorms. Don't let the bl blank stare fool you. Franco is the son of a rich entrepreneur and a very bright student. For some time now he's had his he's had eyes for Lily. So he's another uh, all the Spagonian students I guess uh, stories progress on whether you, uh, throughout as you go through the game. David is a student of Spagonia U. He can be uh, he can be a clown sometimes, but otherwise he's a nice young man who has no trouble getting along with anybody. David is looking for a family-minded girl. A student at Spagonia U and a friend of Franco since childhood. He's a bit of a lone wolf and skips classes in favor of spending time by himself. Ray Raymondo doesn't mince words or make any effort to hide his moody side, but supposedly the ladies really dig that. Frederica, a uh, student at Spagonia U. She's Franco's cousin and a woman of action. Once she gets an idea, she always follows through. The downside, most of her ideas involve partying instead of studying. A mature and sensible arch 
archaeology major who lives in the student dorm. She is a year older than her classmates. While Lily stands at the head of her class, she looks at the people around her and wishes there were there was more to her life than just being serious all the time. The university student who attends Professor Pickle's class for her major, Dora, has a good heart, but she's still working on the ABCs of course. When boys at school talk to her, she stares at the floor and plans right up. She makes a delicious cabbage roll. Uh, Sissio's son, the fact that he inherited his father's facial features bothers him to no end, but <clears throat> he's far too nice a kid to ever say anything about about it. Spagoni is number one troublemaker who subjects his primary target, that would be Denise, to every manner of prank and shenanigan imaginable. There does seem to be a motive behind Morrow's mayhem, though. So he is the son of Lucas. Uh, again, storyline that progresses while you're going on. Natalia's daughter, she can almost... Uh, she can almost always be found playing with her brother Elio. Lu Lucia exercises regularly so as not to follow in her mother's footsteps, but it is much too considered to mention that to her pudgy mum. The little girl who lives with her step, uh, her, her grandmother, Irma, she is ex especially responsible for her age and never seems to stop running errands. Professor Pickles is Professor Pickles' assistant, Professor Pickles' helper, and his greatest admirer. He talks his sweet. He takes a sweet time with just about everything, which explains why he's often plugging away at the same work for three days when anybody else would have finished it in one. A professor of archaeology at Spagonia U and a preeminent, preeminent scholar of all matters pertaining to Dark Gaia. Professor Pickle loves cucumber sandwiches. In fact, st students nice enough to drop off the cucumber. Cucumbery care packages have noted a slight bump in their grades. Coincidence? Uh, the manager of Don Faccio's hot dog may franchise Spagonia location. He's usually the biggest narcissist in hot dogs. Uh, he's easily easily the biggest narcissist in hot dogs and makes a wiener with remarkable depth and, compl and complexity. Uh, <laughs> a walking treasure trove of medical knowledge who can supposedly cure any element. Unfortunately, much to his irritation, Zanchin's arms aren't quite long enough for him to cure his own chronic back pain. A meat bun pro who has been serving them up for 90 years now. Technically, Lynn is retired, having passed the extent of her bun craft on to her only daughter. Decades of customer interaction have made her an excellent judge of character. She only needs one glance. A painfully indecisive man who happens to harbor a secret. Someone dressed in black has been snooping around his house lately, or maybe not. Shrifan is sort of hasty about the details. <laughs> uh, Lynn's son-in-law who works at the pork bun shop, the village's famous buns have always been whipped up by ladies who won't let him come anywhere near the kitchen. Then again, Wang knows how strict Lin can be about her products, so he's perfectly content with being stuck behind the counter. Lin's only daughter, who has recently been initiated into the family meat bun business since then, she has been busy every day churning out one bun after another. Jin Lin's goal is to further evolve the craft before passing the shop down to her own daughter, Hao Lin. Jin Lin and Wang's daughter, Hao, Hao, or no, I think that's Hao Lin, was born into a family of bun makers, and as you might imagine, she is thoroughly bunned out. She has switched to an, an all vegetable diet for my complexion, she says, in hopes of reversing a lifetime of meat bun damage while still of marriage, marriage, marriageable age. Sanchin's grandson and a true meat bun connoisseur, he dreams of one day becoming a meat bun critic who eats nothing but meat buns all day, every day, due to his voracious appetite chun has been growing by leaps and bounds well horizontally in a way anyway zanshin's granddaughter for as long as she can remember she has been obsessed with hide and seek yinlin uh, i'm sorry yilin has been known to stay in hiding for days at a time so challenging her requires a special kind of fortitude manager of don Pacho's hot dog maker franchises chun chun an location the sketchiest vendor in the biz he freely admits to lacing his hot dogs with secret herbs for added nutrition and vitamins huh. Gweek, the village elder of Missouri he has a habit of slipping into tales of his own heroism when in good spirits these tales grow more exaggerated every year to the point where he has now punched out entire waves of wayward elephants with one hand tied behind his back <laughs> truth be told though Gweek is not at all that fond of danger a calm and collected man who seems a likely candidate to be the next village elder he appears to possess some sort of spiritual power, as he can often be spotted mummering up to the heavens. Kwame's daughter Anna has been in the cause of many a headache. Has been the cause of many a headache for him lately. Uh, Isi, a plucky woman, or a plucky mother of eight, and undeniable whiz in the kitchen, who somehow manages to feed entire family after only a half hour in front of the stove. 
EC actually wanted more children, but her husband, who has since passed away, supposedly drew the line at eight. <laughs> Irati Taka, the boy who idolizes weak and swallows the, the elders' tall tales, hook, line, and sinker. Not long ago, Yawa journeyed into the savannah to punch out elephants, but got lost. Thankfully, he made it home without <laughs> incident. Uh, Kofi, a man who runs a shop in the village, he really ought to have packed up and left by now, but he couldn't be bothered. Yeah, but he just couldn't be bothered. Many would call Kofi unsociable, but he prefers the term socially challenged. Kwame's daughter who longs to meet her true love. She believes her prince in shiny armor is out there in the world somewhere. The way she tells it, the two of them will meet their eyes will meet, their eyes will lock, and they will just know. Reasoning with Anna is like squeezing juice from a rock. EC's boy, every once in a while, a child is born in the village with a strange thick sense and the ability to speak with the unseen. Quad happens to be one of one of these. EC's youngest daughter, a tyke, just so bashful she'll take off at so much as a hello. According to EC, ya, 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 has always been that way right after the girl was born. She let out a tiny wail and cl clammed up, up up a second later like she was just, just like she was embarrassed. Manager of John Pachio Hot Dog Stand Mega Franchise's Missouri location at the chain's most mysterious man. He knows how to mix up one high volume, high energy dog. Uh, head of the Holoska clan, he has absolutely terrible memory. First, he'll forget something, then he'll forget what he forgot and get upset. Give him another minute, and he'll have already forgotten what he w what was troubling him. Keep this to yourself. But the other day, he got chewed out by his wife Ursul Ursuli for. Forgetting where they had their first date, did she clip? Did she clip his whiskers good? All right, I'll, I'll be right back. All right, sorry about uh, sorry about that. Anyway, so here, uh, oh, <laughs> forgot to turn my controller on. Okay, uh, Jar uh, Ursula Jari Jari Pika's wife, an old lady who just loves to give. If you visit her shop, you might even find yourself walking out with stuff you didn't even you didn't buy. Jari Thuri, Sariana's husband. He looks tough unless his wife is around. Then it's crystal clear who wears the pants. Keep this to yourself. The other day, Jari Thuri dreamed his wife was giving him the dickens and sprung awake in terror, screaming, I'm sorry, honey. Tragically, this woke his wife, who was sleeping next to him, who, who then proceeded to give him the dickens. <laughs> uh, Jari Thuri's wife, she was once famed for her beauty, the Haloska Rose, they called her. Sariana may seem too hard on her husband, but really she thinks of him all the time. Why, just the other day, she noticed him looking at her and shivering, so she went and heated his bath water all the way up to 140 degrees. Jari Thuri and Sariana's daughter, when she gets older, Marquita wants to marry a man just like her father, some, somebody who can take lots of abuse. Uh, the vendor for the Holoska location, as the, hand, as the hands down king of hot blooded dog masters, it's hard to tell if his sausages are frozen from the weather or whether it's done on purpose. Isan, one of the men helping to restore the ruins in Shamar after years of working in the sand and the dust, Isan can't seem to stop sneezing. Hizer, an impatient fellow who's in such a rush to fix the ruins that he's been known to wreck them even more just so he can get started on the job sooner. A chatty lady who loves gossip like you wouldn't believe even on the most uneventful day she and her friend Dima can find some new morsels to talk each other's ears off about. A famous sh Shamaran fortune teller who knows much about the powers of the moon and the local legends. Apparently, even people from cold and distant lands catch wind of Iman's miraculous talents and decide to visit her. Uh, one of the men helping to uh, at, or Uthba, one of the men restoring to or one of the men helping to restore the ruins. Uthba's incessant praying every night leaves him drowsy day after day. He's starting to wonder if he can't just pray in your sleep and still get credit for it. Uh, Mufit, an ice cream vendor known for his winning smile and the gooey, stretchy ice cream he serves, having been raised on this elastic edibles, Mufit naturally believes all the world's ice cream is the same. Somebody needs to bring the man another, a cone from another country and serve him two scoops of reality. Erhan, his son, he helps his father with the restoration of the ruins. He, Erhan walks like his father, talks like his father. The, they're two peas in a pod about the only telltale differences: his height, which he got from his mother. A stubborn car uh, Labib, a stubborn carpet maker at, with years and years of experience, Labib snuck into the workshop and made his first carpet at the tender age of five, flooring the other carpet makers at the time, his pet peeve, flamboyant youngsters. Sa Saeed, 
A man who loves tea more than breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Long ago, the girl he was dating asked, which do you love more, tea or me? Saeed looked at his sugar and didn't even blink before answering tea. Not long after, Saeed, not long after Saeed was sugar-free. Latif, Labib's younger brother, a klutz with his fingers who washed out before he could e ever become a carpet maker. He, he's spacey, he's unreliable, and yet, oddly enough, he handles the carpet workshop's accounts. Ara, owner of the Golden Trading Company, she has a sharp eye for merchandise and never misses a potential new hit item. Take her latest product idea, Shattered Planet Keychain, leave it to Ira. Dima, Rania's gossip partner, Dima has been babbling away for so long that she wound up missing her chance to meet a nice man. This would undoubtedly, undoubtedly bother her if she weren't too busy gabbing to notice. Musaid, chatterbox who appointed himself the local tour guide. He's thorough to, he's thorough, make no mistake, give him the chance and Musaid will treat even the grungiest restroom like the eighth wonder of the world. It takes him half a day just to show people around one block. Sight, uh, Shadi Labib's son, an aspiring singer whose deep, rich baritone causes all the ladies to melt. Sadly, Shahid's father disapproves of such shameless razzle dazzle, and the two are constantly clashing. Samar Safi's directionally challenged older sister. Her sense of direction is so poor, in, her, in fact, that it's become almost legendary with new and embarrassing chapters of the Samar saga being recorded on a daily basis. Uh, Lila, a confident and fetching university student with an exotic flair, she is currently researching the ruins. Or Layla, Lila, uh, always dots her eyes and crosses her T's, but th the truth is she is very much a clumsy oaf, and yet, oddly enough, many of her suitors cite this as a plus. Samara's little brother, who has his hands full, keeping his direction impaired, the sister from wandering off a cliff. Safi notices that he's not clingy, he doesn't need his sister, she needs him. No, Safi insists that he's not clingy, he doesn't need his sister, she needs him. To the doubters out there, this is 100% true. An admirable lad who knows who, an, an admirable lad who knows you can't cut corners if you want to fulfill your dreams. It, these days, Shadik has been practicing to become a tour guide, just like Musaid. A resilient girl, so young and yet put through so much grief by her completely unre unre unreasonable older sister Yasmin, Samia consoles herself with the knowledge that she will grow up to be a patient person. Yasmin. A spirited girl who protects Shamar along with her younger sister, Samia. She can't seem to decide on a name for her team. Currently, it's the pretty committee to preserve peace in Shamar. Last week, it was darling defenders of the Shamar and Sands, while the week before it was full metal sh shamal chemists. Wait, full metal shamal chemists, which is, I'm going to guess, a, uh, a, the, Anime Full Metal Alchemists, I'm sure that's just a them trying to copy it in some way by adding the Shamal Chemists at the end, and the metal is a different word than the way the show has it is M E A T, wait, M E M E A T L E, I believe, and it's Alchemists, A L C H E M I S T S, while well, this has sh Shamal Chemists. Someone really needs to take her comic books away, as well as teach her not to have so hard missions. Uh, the Shamarian location hot dog vendor, always rel reliant on the kindness of strangers, he gives back to the community via his tantalizing turkey dogs made with 20 plus different herbs and spices. A gifted fish, uh, uh Tian Chai, a gifted fisherman who once landed a seven foot whopper all by himself. Tian Chai is a very friendly person just so long as you don't bring up his daughter. Jamai, a young man who hopes to one day be an even greater fisherman than his father, his passion often gets the best of him one day he even set sail on this tempest, exclaiming, exclaiming where there's a will, there's a way. Well, apparently that way was straight down because the boat sunk in the storm. Thankfully, its shepherd passenger survived. Lately, Jamal, oh, Jamal, has spent more time calming his father's turbulent mood than the sea's turbulent waters. K.O., a nimble-fingered young man with a penchant for mascot making. Event eventually, his, this hobby developed into a full-time job, he opened up a, and he opened up a shop. K.O.'s next project, making a Mascot version of the spiky blue hedgehog who recently turned up at the village. Rudy, a hard-working, caring young lady who looks out for her father, her siblings, her grades. Yes, she's a fine girl. Don't bother asking what's in that basket she balances on her head, though. That's her own little secret, see? Uh, Nagi, a well-meaning girl with the unfortunate habit of causing disaster at nearly every turn. Nagi dreams of growing up to be a wonderful young lady just like her sister Rudy. Uh, 
the Don, uh, the hot dog vendor for Adabat. He's more cool and aloof before breakfast than most men are all day long. His handmade dogs use links made from fish for a fresh, slight taste. Louis Montaigne, a self-styled love expert who claims to have one as many hearts as there are stars in the sky. Louis is ha always happy to teach the ABCs of that sticky wicket they call romance. If you ask nicely, he'll even help you practice just as long as you're okay with his particular practice style. Okay. Boss, a business wizard who can move billions with a mere snap of his fingers. Seeing as life is short and time is money, he believes investing all of his time looking out for number one. If you were wondering, the boss doesn't make his real name public for business reasons, of course. Death Big, a big name producer worried about the future of the music inter industry. Death Big is currently seeking a pop sweetheart newcomer sensation with urban integrity, but with a dark side, too. Elizabeth, an educator who has worked in the area of schools for ages. People affectionately call her Liz. She loves seeing her kids smile and reaches out to people left and right, but that's probably just the teacher in her. Liz has cared for more than 2,000 students to date. Charles, a superior student and aspiring doctor, who sits at the top of his class and shows no sign of slipping. One teensy little problem, he's squeamish and can't stand the sight of blood. When the cadavers roll in, he rolls out and talks to the professor into giving him credit anyway. Uh, Robert, a deaf big fan who moved to, into the city to meet his hero who works part-time at the shop. Bob wants to be like deaf big more than anything, but so far he's only gotten the big part down. Uh, a little Kate, a bright and bubbly pop star in the making with a killer voice and dance moves to match. She's a go-getter too. Little Kate doesn't sit around waiting for favors if lives ride. She says then move over because I'm driving. Brenda, freelance writer who travels around the world. These days, Brenda has been following the global crisis, pinning, uh, pinning stories like Shattered Planet, Who Broke the Globe, and Light and Dark Fight for Domination, or Do Blue Hedgehogs Dream of Electric Eggs? Uh, the Empire City hot dog vendor, location without a doubt, or without a doubt, the friendliest guy in hot dogs. Check out the Empire City hot spots while nibbling one of his specialty links. EF. Dash D C nineteen ninety eight. Once a model mainstay of the egg fighter force, this robot's gotten tired of working often does his best to sneak off and avoid his duties these days. E F dash M D one nine nine one nine nine one. Originally among the oldest of the egg fighters, he now mans one of Eggman Land's shops. His worth eth ethic and loyalty to Eggman are unrivaled, but the years have made their mark on his AI. These days you never know what's going to come out of his mouth next. EFXB2006 as one of the newest additions to the egg, fight, the egg fighters. He still lacks real world experience and spends most of his time studying. The uh, Robotic Land hot dog vendor, uh, despite being the toughest guy in the fast in fast food, he makes a hot, hot dog so classic it tastes nostalgic even at the first bite. So you can, if you notice his hair is, uh, I, I guess it is uh, blonde. I guess it's just the lighting in Robotic Land. Winto said a classic tale of a puppet and his a boy and his puppet. Winto's traveled the world with his animate buddy Chow. If it weren't for the obvious size difference, nobody would believe the vice Chow wasn't the one controlling the painfully shy Wintos. All right, so that's all of the uh, directory people. That's all the talked about all the people in the in the uh, in the game, all the NPCs. Now this is all of the uh, the bestiary. Uh, these these will be Robotnik's people, a humanoid robot designed and built for the egg, for the genius scientist Eggman. This basic model has the most versatile set of features and was made in the greatest quantity. Its AI is set to seek and destroy any blue hedgehogs in the area. Its rotund build seems reminiscent of someone. Egg fighter, egg fighter shield. So I'm gonna guess these are just you call it egg fighter, but then you just add like shield and sword and all that. The powerful steel s shields these egg fighters carry can easily defect deflect most attacks. It would take a supersonic blast to knock away their defenses or someone quick and clever enough to attack them from the rear. Uh, spring, uh, egg fighter spring shield. Powerful springs loaded into these egg fighters. Shields bounce any, uh, any and all frontal attacks back. Electric shield, a high voltage current cor courses through the shields these units carry dealing mass damage to anything they touch. Thankfully the high cost of manufacturing shields made of sufficiently strong and conductive alloys meant that only a few were ever produced. Egg shooter, so uh, that's what these guys are called. Uh, custom cannons mounted on the egg fighter's arms. Snipe a Sonic as he races past. A special upgrade allows them to keep on fighting even after their body is destroyed. I'm going to guess that's where the little fighters come in from. Uh, egg fighter knight. Only a small group of elite units are outfitted with the latest and offensive and defensive equipment, making these knights more than a little smug. Uh, you can see the 
shield, the swords are pretty much the same, but the these have spring shields. Very few egg fighter units have the horsepower necessary to heft this spring loaded shield and massive sword together. I'm gonna guess, okay, that's the, that's the electric shield one, that's the spring shield, and that's the normal shield. These egg fighter units bear both a sword and shield, making them perfectly balanced combat machines. These are the regular sword ones, a sword carrying variation on the egg fighter. These units put the long range of their massive blades to work and attempt to slice and dice their enemies. Little fighters in a stroke of genius, Eggman ro uh, programmed the hands of his egg fighter units with an uh, autonomous AI enabling them to fight on even after the main body fails. Rumor has it the hands and bodies don't always get along too well. Egg Launcher H, these units fire horizontal missiles straight ahead at incoming targets. The missile's homing feature makes them tough to dodge, but a well-timed stomp or sonic boost can send them flying. Egg Launcher V, so you can see these have the, had them on their hands and these have them on their backs. I'm not, I'm not sure if the H and the V has anything to do with the way they the missiles travel, uh, but these usually fire a horizontal missile straight ahead and these usually go into the air and then arc down at Sonic. After firing two Sonic seeking missiles into the air these drones are all out of ammo left to tackle our hero with their fists. Uh, oh okay so th th these are both they have two on their hands and two on their backs so this is the egg launcher H, H plus V. Loaded for bear with horizontal and vertical missiles, these units have four shots of smoking Sonic, making them a royal pain. Mobile cannon, far off targets, get peppered with fire, but when a danger draw, when, but when danger draws near, these sneaky units flee underground. Even when hidden away underfoot, a solid stomp will take them out. Spinner uh, E E6 spinner. These baddies fly by rotating the wings that jut from their sides like a propeller. They that said fly is about all they do, seeing as how they don't attack. They're actually kind of cute. Uh, E16 Thunder Spinners or Electric Spinners. Think of these like a normal spinner, and you'll be in a world. You'll be in for a world of hurt when it discharges the jolt of electricity, or wait, wait for their zap to end and take them out. Uh, Egg Typhoon. They may look like harmless fans, but the gale force wind these foes put out can tear you to shreds on contact. Egg Blizzard, a powerful cooling system, hyper chills the air blasted forth from these fans. Take a direct hit, and you'll be an ice cube before you can say burr. Egg flame superheaters within these fans' bodies produce an endless stream of flame blown forth at hapless targets known for their hot tempers. Even their fellow robots tend to keep their distance. Thunderball. These critters hover along em emitting high voltage bursts peri periodically. If they spot Sonic, they'll make a beeline for him. Uh, even their designer is 100% sure how they float like that. Arrow can. These miniature hovering gun turrets open fire on anything that moves into range. The recoil from each shot sends them reeling just long enough to be vulnerable. Golden arrow cannon. Eggman built these pure gold robots on a whim one day. They run away after popping out for a quick attack. Beat them before they can b beat them before they can run away for a nice treat, which is uh, more ad or additional score. Arrow chasers. These aerial arsenals circle around a Sonic's front and let loose with laser beams and missile salvos. Sometimes they get a little too caught up in, up in attacking and forget to keep an eye out for obstacles behind them. Whoops. Interceptor Eggman's ultimate masterpiece in mid-sized anti-sonic weaponry. It boasts extreme durability and a wide variety of attacks. At present, only one has been made, but it dogs Sonic through multiple scenes. Uh, Egg Shackle, don't let its tiny structure and cute movements fool you. These guys will start draining your ring supply as soon as they latch on. Shake them off quick or they'll suck you dry. Egg Burst, these innocent grins on these baddies bel belie a twisted personality that would allow them to self-destruct without batting an eye in order to take Sonic with them. As one of the uh, egg beetle, as one of the giant robots Eggman created to stop Sonic, this behemoth beetle is equipped with massive pincers and incendiary rounds and guided missile uh, incendiary rounds, guided missiles and more. Egg Devil Ray, a massive fish robot created by Eggman to defeat Sonic armed with a laser beam and explosives capable of dealing quick and expensive Expansive blast, perfectly suited to targeting fast-moving objects. Egg Lancer, when both the Egg Beetle and the Egg Devil were defeated, Robotnik combined their designs into the beast, eliminating the weaknesses of both. Into this beast, eliminating the weaknesses of both. Egg Dragoon, Robotnik created this mechanical dragon in his efforts to thwart Sonic, putting years of research into the Hedgehog movements patterns to use in its design. It represents the absolute pinnacle of mad science. All right, so we'll take a look at the Dark Guys minions, Bestiary. Which is, has five less enemies than uh, Robotnik's uh, robots do. 
uh, nightmare under dark guys influence people's ambient fears, doubts, and anger manifest in these monsters. They aren't very bright, acting only on a base drive to hurt those nearby. Deep nightmare when even deeper wellsprings of grief and anger and the world's people gather, they give rise to these mean monsters. They're both stronger and tougher to take out than their nightmare cousins. Killer B, it can be tough to get a fix on these nimble nasties long enough to land an attack. Let them get close, and they'll make a beeline for you for you behind first, and that's one point you don't want to get in to get it safest. To throw them at to throw something at them from afar. Red Killer B, the already tricky Killer B, just got to, uh, trickier, better, faster, and stronger than before. Pure master monsters born of Dark Gaia with exceptionally high intelligence can take on a humanoid appearance like these fiends as masters of curative magi uh, magic. These phantoms go around healing their cohorts for whatever reason it isn't able to heal its own wounds though, which is very useful. That's something I didn't point out, but I wasn't 100% sure whether it could actually, or whether it healed itself or not. Power master Ma monsters born of Dark Gaia with exceptionally high intelligence. Okay, so that's the top uh, sentence will be the same. Their magical empowerment raises their allies' attack strength. Try to take them out before they get a spell off. Something you definitely want to uh, knock out pretty quickly. Fright Master. Left alone long enough, these dark conjurers will summon forth an endless supply of frights. Cut them off at the source. Fire Master. These pyromancers are weathered in a steady blaze that makes head-on attacks dangerous. Douse them with a water barrel, then go in for the beatdown. Lightning Master, while they control, while their control of lightning makes the, these mages a threat from afar, they resort to clumsily waving their staffs around when cornered. Little Rex, though quick to chomp, these little guys don't pack much fight. That said, get enough of them together and it, it spells trouble. Denser than they look, they make great weapons when thrown. Red Rex, these powered up Rexes are still not very strong. Try wielding one in each hand as dual weapons. Dark Fright, appearing in packs at a time, these mini monsters going to going for tackle, it's thought that each of the quiet sighs and gossipy insults of everyday life are affected by the power of Dark Guy to form a new fright. Uh, uh, Red Fright, there's no reason to shout if people or talk about them behind their backs, especially when Dark Guy has influence, then turns each word into a Red Fright to attack humanity. These serpentine sneaks dwell in the uh, cracks and walls and floors and fire energy bullets from their mouths. These are called Dark Heels, by the way. As very territorial creatures, they get snarky if anyone tries to enter their nest. Big Mother, gaping maw in the belly of these beasts, spawns a host of little rexes that don't bother throwing anything at their open mouth as it will simply be eaten. Titan, as one of the biggest and baddest creatures born in Dark Gaia, these bruisers operate on a simple drive on uh, for destruction, leading them to barrel right through any allies in their way. Even flower, normal flowers draw dark energy through the soil, they transform into this berserk hybrid, they spew pure evil at passerby. At passerby, passersby, but are rooted firmly in place, making them immobile. Dark bat flocks of these bats make their homes where dark eyes energy runs densest. densest. Uh, they aren't particularly hostile, and even if you defeat one, another will soon appear to take up its position. Dark bat sniper, even harmless dark bats can grow wild after absorbing too much of dark eyes in sinister energy. These mutant bats fire energy bullets from their tails. Thunder bat, even har okay. Uh, the strain of this strain of a bat releases a high voltage blast periodically time your con contact care or you'll get a nasty zap. Dark Guy Phoenix is divine protector of the Chunay and people was ta tainted by Dark Guy's influence when it berserk leaving its uh, usually quiet existence in the depths of the Gaia Temple previously it only emerged once a uh, year during the Meat Bun Festival. Dark Moray, Dark Guy sinister influence joined with the freezing climate of the Holos Tundra to form this beast the frost it breathes comes from human sorrow and grief frozen into deadly projectiles. Dark Guardian, the abundant moon energy within the Shamar Temple was twisted into this form of Dark Guy's evil, evil influence. It attacks with a giant hammer imbued with the power of thunder. Since it draws upon lunar power, it will grow weaker if the moon altar is destroyed. Dark Gaia, as an incarnation of darkness itself, the beast exists solely to destroy the world. To destroy the world, the abomination grows strong on the negative energy of the world, sleeping within its core for millennia. And wait, Gaia Manuscripts 4:11. Uh, when the beast is complete. Its dark arm shall encompass the planet, ushering in the, in the end of times. The world and death will fall into a deep sleep and waiting for the time of rebirth to come. Guy Manuscripts 428. Alright, so that's that. Uh, uh, that's it for that. Let me see what else we have to do. I guess we can take a look at the music really quickly. Oh, I think we already did that, didn't we? Alright, so I, yeah, that's, that's it. So now I will... Uh, probably go to the world map and just talk about some of the 
well, yeah, I gotta go to Walmart because I'm gonna show off the, uh, yeah, show off the options and stuff. But before that, I will talk about the uh, the differences in the game, or not uh, the differences, not not just yet, but the the levels. So nine levels or continents exist in the game. Oh, nine levels. I'm sorry. Nine levels exist in the game on seven continents, all of which are based on real world locations. Each stage is placed on a different continent on Earth. These locations include Apatos, Windmill Isle, White Island. This level is the first level in the game and serves as the backdrop to most of the tutorial tutorials in the game. Its architecture is influenced by Greek Mediterranean architecture, like the real Greek island of K of Chora, My Mykonos, Greece. It looks similar to the Greek city of Santorini. Spagonia rooftop run, orange roof. So, the you notice I, I said Windmill Isle, White Island. White Island is the Japanese name for Windmill Isle, or that's the day that's the day stage, or that's the stage's name, Windmill Isle. So the second, the second name that I name off will be, will be the Japanese uh, translation for that name, rooftop run, day, uh, or rooftop run, day or night. Orange roofs, day night, uh, level influenced by Western European architecture, like the real Italian city, as uh, like the real Italian city of city of Siena, Missouri, Savannah, Citadel, Clay Castle, or sandy desert like level inspired by Africa. This is present in the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3 versions of the Hub World Day Night Day and Night stages on the Wii and PS2 version. It is only playable for the boss Egg Beetle, Egg Beetle and as a map page. Uh, so it, uh, okay, I'll talk more about that in a minute. Haloska Cool Edge, an icy location, most like most likely based on Alaska due to the name Haloska, Alaska. Well, uh, Alaska does not have any O's in it. You take the O's out, and the H, and you're only missing a few letters before you get to Alaska. Uh, Chunan Dragon Road, a level inspired by China, includes a run along what looks like the Great Wall. The only reason why it's probably based in China is the people, and uh, well, I guess a couple things. The people, the way they're dressed, the location, uh, and, and the building, and the architectures of the buildings, the dragons. Uh, China is heavily influenced by dragons. You, uh, they, uh, tr uh, they really like dragon a lot more than any other Asian country. And because you, you run along the Great Wall. That's you know, Japan doesn't have a Great Wall, nor does any other. Uh, Asian location, so that's why Chunan is based on China. Shamar Arid Sands, a stage designed to resemble a Middle Eastern desert landscape, probably Petra Jordan, but no, it, it also takes uh, it also takes locations and ideas from Israel, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, Lebanon, and a few other locations. Empire City Skyscraper Scamper, location based on New York City, where Sonic is shown to run between skyscrapers. The stage is only available on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 versions. And the hub world is supposed to be is supposed to resemble Central Park. Make the reason why it's supposed to be in New York City. Adabat Jungle Joy Ride, a level inspired by Angkor and Eastern uh, Southeastern Asia themes. It contains many flowing rivers and high cliffs. Ro uh, Robotnik Land, Crimson Car Carnival. Robotics Empire, based on an island near the fifth continent. The stage is com combination of music par amusement park and a factory. It resembles a fusion of circus park, lava shelter, a hot shelter, and final egg. All right, so uh, something. Let me see. Love uh, s something else. Level levels have been designed so that. The Two aforementioned modes of 2D and 3D gameplay will be switched between roughly every 15 to 30 seconds, while whilst no stage will last more than five minutes. In addition, the game features a day-night system. Some parts of the action stages have been especially built so that the time will pass, and these can be played by your Sonic or his Werehog form, while others are only built for one specific form. And during these areas, when the time will not pass, the player is easily able to advance time manually during the areas allowing either form, should they prefer one or the other. The game also features town stages or hub worlds that are set in the same environments as the action stages and players also are able to walk around in the environment and freely speak to townspeople even gaining items from them however this overworld can be completely ignored should the player prefer to simply play through the, all the stages optional side quests are also available from these stages for instance using tails to fly the tornado plane side quests will, will be the only time characters other than sonic will be playable such side quests are only available 
PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 versions. Uh, so that's that gives it another RPG element. A lot of RPG el uh, games have optional side quests in towns. Well, well, you can skip all of these. None of these are are ne necessary. You know, all you know, uh, but I don't I don't know why it says you can play as other characters. The only other character you can play is Tails, and that's only to fight the tornado. Now, but. Uh, so that's that. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the differences in the console differences due to the significant power and capabilities of the console of the consoles, the PS3 360 compared to the Wii PS2. There are significant diff differences between the two versions of the game release. Note that there are there are, is an additional mobile phone release developed by GameLoft that sports completely different gameplay, so it is not considered uh, on the information I'm reading. But I never I didn't know there was a mobile phone version. Okay, so in the Wii PS2 version, when you run into a specific part of a stage or hit a question mark in this action stages. Wait. Okay. Chip speaks and reads the words on the screen while in the. While the PS3, Xbox 360, it's only read. It's only read rather than spoken. Okay, yeah, so in the PS2 Wii version, the gameplay will stop. Chip will come out onto the screen and will talk, and then it will go away while. In the uh, like, if you're in during the middle of a level, I believe it'll just read instead of chip actually coming out to the front of the screen. The hub world in the, I guess I can rotate this. It doesn't really matter. A lot better than if you're standing there looking at the at the thing and I'll uh, get to show off. Uh, so whatever. Anyway, uh, the hub world in the Wii PS2 version consists of selecting an area to go to go within ex then exploration. Also, the time of day is only changeable after the content has been restored. So what that means is. It's just it's it's, it's kind of like a painting uh, or, or like a picture, and you have different you have about three to four depending on the area locations that you can go to, which will then show another picture like thing with the characters that stand still. There, as you go through the the dialogue text, their expressions will change, but they're not moving. It'll just kind of like flash. You have a a, a character. Being normal, get through their dialogue so far, then they'll then their expression will change. But they'll keep that expression either through the entire way, or they'll change again, which is definitely a lot worse. Uh, you know, a lot or less technical, or you know, that's obviously a lot less than what the Xbox 360, PS3 versions can do. Uh, in the uh, continent, you have to restore, you have to follow the storyline to be able to switch the continents day and night. To be able to do that, you have to go through. So, like, say, if we went to uh, Apatos, right? Well, since we couldn't play... Well, I guess Spagonia would be better. Because Spagonia, you can only play the night stage first, after getting Apatos. Which you have to do in the PS3 version. Go to Apatos, Missouri, fight the boss fight, go to Spagonia, do the night... Uh, the night stage. Leave, go to either Missouri... Uh, yeah, I believe go to Missouri fix the planet, then go to Spagonia again, then you can do the day stage, and then and only then can you switch day and night. Uh, the hub world in Wii PS2 versions, cause, okay, I guess I already read that. In the daytime stages, Sonic doesn't get an extra life after collecting 100 rings in the Wii PS2 version, nor are there any extra life items. However, in the PS3, Xbox 360 version, he does, and there are. So in the Wii, in the, uh, I'm just going to say PS2 version, but I'm also meaning the Wii version. I'm going to say the PS3 version, instead of saying Xbox 360 versions. The PS2 version there, there are Gaia temples. You can actually go inside of the Gaia temples, and you can uh, go around. There are doors in which you have to use uh, moon, sun, and moon medals, similar to how in this game you can unlock different levels with the sun and moon medals. But you, uh, it, but it's kind of small. You know, that's about the only hub world in the game. You have two main areas, and then sometimes a boss fight. You have a, a sun door and a moon door, which you have to travel through, and then you go and fight the boss. Well, or I'm sorry, then you then you do the level, you come back out, then you ha then you can b fight a boss fight. Well, while in that temple, you have different side doors stuck around everywhere that require so many sun and moon medals. So you you may have to get 25 sun medals, 10 moon medals, or 50 sun medals, and uh, 45 moon medals. You know, it's, it's different depending on the location. Well, in these Gaia temples, and the game doesn't tell you anywhere where these lives are, 
but you can find lives in these sky temples, and you definitely need them because you only you, you only start the game out with two, and the more you go on, especially when you try to fight Dark Guy with only two lives. I actually tried to do that not knowing where the lives were and had to quit playing the game because I just kept dying so much in the Dark Gaia fight until one day I finally got it and then I started to explore around the Gaia temples and realized, oh hey, there's lives in there. So yeah, that was a pretty good way to figure it out after fighting so hard with Dark Gaia. But anyway, so uh, in the Wii and the PS2 version, lives work differently and are permanent. Uh, and our permanent Sonic by default always starts lives with levels with three lives. Uh, for example, if Sonic lost two lives in a night act, he would regain them by the start of the next level and to obtain more lives. Sonic mu must visit areas in, dark in Gaia gates that contain extra life items, which will permanently increase the number of chances Sonic has to complete a state a single level. So, okay, I thought it was two, but, 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 but my bad. Well, yeah, you actually have two, one, and then zero, so that counts as three lives. So you start out with two lives, you then have one life, and then on that zero life, that will be your last life. If you lose your zero life, you lose. It's done. So instead of, like with this game, you see I have 74 lives, but I can lose them going through a level. In this game, you start out each level with so many lives, and then you progress through the, li the, the game with those set lives, but you have to find them in the Gaia Gates. In the PS3 version, homing attack targets are green, while in the uh, PS2 version are red. The Missouri levels are removed as well as the entire city in its entirety from the PS2 version, except for Missouri's boss fight. And that's another big difference, and that's why the PS3 version is the complete version, while the PS2 version isn't. <laughs> There's not really a, a name for it, but you know, Sonic begins with all his abilities in the PS2 version, while he must acquire them in the PS3 version. Kind of bad, but, you know, it kind of gives you, a, I guess, an RPG element again there, where I have to kind of progress through the game and build up your characters. Uh, build up your character. Sonic Werehog is the only one who levels up and what he gains is predetermined when he acquires... Wait, Sonic the Werehog is the only one who levels up and it and what he gains is pre predetermined when he acquires a certain number of orbs in the uh, Wii PS2 in the PS2 version. He also has significantly fewer moves than in the PS3 version. And in the Wii uh, PS2 version he collects Dark Gaia Force instead of Chaos Orbs in order to improve his abilities. Sonic's top speed and Sonic boost gauge can't be leveled up permanently and are determined by rings gathered in the stage of the PS2 version. If Sonic takes damage, he levels down on, by one bar, bar of boost. In the PS3 version, Sonic uh, allows the PS3 version allows this bar to increase in level for the rest of the game, which is definitely a lot better than the PS2 version. But it's not that hard to not take damage in the, P in the PS2 version, but when you do, it definitely does suck because you lose, you lose a lot of rings, like just like in this game. In the PS3 version, the Sonic Boost is performed by holding down the, the boost button. It works continuously and can be filled by collecting rings and can be leveled up to increase the bar length. In the uh, PS2 version, the Sonic Boost works by pressing the boost button and the boost lasts for only 2-3 to three seconds. It's filled by collecting rings, performing action chains, and drifting. It costs one square of the bar to use a single boost and the bar can be increased by collecting rings from a total of 3 bars to 6, which is definitely a lot worse, but it's not too bad once you get used to it, especially being able to perform action change which action chains which is destroying a whole bunch of enemies in a single like in a row or in a, a timed event or like a handful of seconds maybe you know you kill an egg fighter take three steps and then kill another one you have to do it fast but you can definitely fill up your boost gauge that way as well uh, drifting also a big feature that will definitely help you out doing that as well action chains are a feature found only in the Wii and the PS2 version when Sonic strings together certain types of combos he can create an action chain the more moves Sonic does the more boost he power he gets action chains must be initiated with destroying two enemies consecutively they they can be continued by destroying more enemies touching speed paths starting grinding and, and ring dashing however they cannot be continued with boosting drifting stomping using the jump pads and their blue sp and their blue springs or using pulleys so kind of small Sonic must find medals in the PS3 version in order to access new levels in the PS2 version. Sun and Moon tablets are used to access levels. The medals are determined by rank or gathered automatically after certain missions, and they're used to unlock secret areas at Gaia Gate. So the tablets are what you have to do to open the doors. The medals are, as they said, determined by rank. So the, the better the rank, the more medals you get. But you also have to find them hidden around in uh, any other areas as well. Or may maybe not. I always thought you did, but maybe just because I had such a uh, low rank, especially during the daytime stages, I wasn't able to collect as many moon medals. Uh, 
Gaia gates are not present in the PS3 version. Instead, those those versions feature fully explorable hub worlds, which is a, a lot better. You know, I would definitely say, and you know, at least in my opinion. But PS2 version, the Gaia gates serve as the hub worlds, and then Sonic can use his medals to open up various puzzles, which are home to a variety of extras, including extra life items. Are only the only other function is to serve as a simpler level select. Sonic's rank in the PS3 version is determined by score, and its worst rank is E on the P PS2 version. Regular Sonic's ranks are determined by completion while time, while Sonic Werehogs are judged on three factors. Level up orbs gathered, completion time, and number of rings gathered, and the worst ranking of this version is C. For boss battle rankings, the PS3 version is determined by score. The, the PS2 version uses time as a sole factor and has no ranks aside from S, which earns a medal, and a C, which doesn't earn or award any bonuses which is pretty hard the further on you go, it's hard to collect S ranks or even uh, B ranks for that matter. The C is actually a, a pretty common average for a lot of people unless you get really used to it, but you have to remember that time thing and time while doing a boss fight is not something that everyone is really used to doing so it does take a little bit longer to get used to. Let me make sure I'm still recording. Alright, good. Uh, Eggman Land is one long stage where Sonic switches switches forms in the PS3, Xbox, or the PS3 version. In the PS2 version, it starts with the daytime stage and missions have been forced switching to five nighttime levels. However, there are, there is no explorable Gaia Gate, so it's a lot easier, but not nearly as fun because it lets you uh, kind of well, I guess immerse yourself in it a little bit more. You know, you have you just have to keep switching to it from from doing the the continents like you did before the, the other six continents, you now have this one continent where you go through one really long level while you're going through the factory, and it kind of gives you a sense of time, you know, like, while you have to go through so far, you have to keep switching day and night, so, uh, a lot of people actually like that kind of stuff, which I'm, I'm glad they did add that, but Eggman Land is still very long, and I still do not like it as a level. I wish they would have, uh, switched for the, well, the normal mission isn't that, or the normal level isn't that bad, but the hot dog missions are nearly impossible to beat. In the Jungle Joyride stage in the PS3 version, Sonic is seen running on the water, but in the PS2 version, Sonic appears to surf while he runs on it. This is also seen in later, in a later game, Sonic Generations for the 3DS. Uh, the PS2 version of the Sky Chase minigames have been completely removed. In the PS2 version, it's, it's possible to spin dash. Sonic spins automatically whenever he boosts and can't. In and encounters a speed pad. Also, at the beginning of the level, if the player presses the button, the boost button, or swings the Wii Remote just as the countdown ends, Sonic will not only start off with a spin dash, but you also get one free boost. If the player presses the button or swings too late, Sonic will trip and fall for a few seconds, which will definitely hurt your time. But it's not that hard to actually get the timing down when you're pushing the button. I've never played it with the Wii version. I've only had the PS2 version. It's it's definitely something that is very easy to get used to, and once you get used to it, it'll definitely help you out in the long run. Uh, Sonic has fewer voice clips in the PS2 version, for example, he only has one clip for boosting, while there are at least three in the PS3 version. Uh, the levels in the game are much more challenging in the PS3 ver version and are much longer, while the PS2 version, the levels are much shorter and offer easier gameplay. Also, the PS3 version is the only version in which the, the day has three acts for every continent. In the PS3 version, the Hedgehog engine is used, and this is used to reflect light off everything in the a screen to produce CGI quality graphics in game as you would expect the PS3 version of the game received more praise on the graphics front however the PS2 versions were commended also this engine is also used to load levels while you play them this is needed to keep up with incredible speeds Sonic reaches in the daytime stages of the game without encountering too many frame rate or slowdown issues it can allow Sonic to reach in excess of 300 miles per hour while the PS2 consoles cannot handle the power of the Hedgehog engines so the daytime levels were created by Sonic Team cooperation with Dimps to supply alternative but simpler gameplay. Dimps handles a lot of the uh, handheld Sonic games, a lot of the uh, Game Boy and Game uh, Game Boy Advance games and Nintendo DS and 3DS games. Uh, Dimps will handle while the console games uh, Sonic Team will will use or will uh, handle all of that stuff. In the nighttime stages, Sonic appears to run faster while dashing in the PS2 version compared to the PS3 version. His speed also seems to be less controllable and can shatter objects by running into them. Also, the aura on its attacks are blue in the PS2 version and also red, green, and yellow while it is purple in the PS3 version. Which is another thing to note that the graphical differences increase. Interestingly, the aura is turned blue when Sonic activates his unleashed mode in the PS3 version. 
and the PS3 version of the Star Post checkpoints appears in the daytime nighttime acts as well, but in the PS2 version the Star Post appears exclusively in the time attack missions during the daytime sections and the add time. PS2 version of this of the Unleashed of Unleashed are the last main series Sonic games to feature item capsules and levels in the net nighttime stages these hidden objects hold extra Gaia Force, Unleashed Force or hidden extras. In day stages they only hold hidden extras in Gaia Gates they cannot they cannot hold a hidden extras, extra lives, or unlock missions. They behave slightly differently than other item boxes in the series. They cannot be destroyed by homing attacking uh, by homing atta by using the homing attack but can instantly be destroyed when touched. They resemble the item boxes in the Sonic Rush series and the design appears in Sonic and Sega All Stars Racing, which is another uh, uh, Sonic uh, which is Sonic Racing game as the title suggests. In the PS2 version the Night Axe has names and Apatos, Spagonia, Holoska, and Chunan each have three similar uh, have three Shamar and Adabat have four, and Eggman Land has five. In the PS3 version, each world except for Eggman Land has two acts called Act One and Act Two. The Wii PS2, uh, the PS2 version of the final boss, Perfect Dark Guy section, is Super Sonic fight it by itself. While the PS3 version, uh, the Guy Colossus fights Perfect Dark Guy along with Super Sonic. The PS2 version also has some differences between the Wii version and the PS2 version. Sonic looks and render and renderings are similar to his adventure style. His quills don't move like the Wii version. He even has a uh, he. He even has a darker blue in the PS2 version. On the PS2 version, tricks can only be performed one button at a time, while in the PS3 version, all buttons can be performed simultaneously. So that's the differences between the consoles. Uh, I will now talk about the uh, some lesser-known trivia about the game that I'll show off. The uh, trophies and uh, just the trophies. I won't actually ha talk about how to get them. But I'll just uh, you know show them off, and I'll show off some of the uh, uh, some of the uh, the all of the options, and then I'll quit. The game's art and direction cutscenes are widely inspired by animations of the Pixar Studio. Between the HD games, the PlayStation 3 version runs faster, 60 frames per second, rather than a cap three about 30 frames per second, but also contains more more noticeable frame rate dips. Though it also drops in the 360 version in certain areas. Certain special effects such as sonic speed, dust particles are also enhanced on PS3. While miscellaneous details such as windmills in the distance are missing, character models are very uh, slightly enriched in the PlayStation 3. While the, Xbox, uh, while the 360 employs smoother shading, the transition between day and night all was also changed to be silent screen showing the metals. PS3 rather than Sonic's transformation between the SD games that we've released is generally regarded as superior as the PlayStation 2 version has less polygons and dimmer lighting. The ghost photographers from Sonic Night of the Werehog appear in the game. The first scene at Robotnik Landing in the missions Tower Terror and Night Friday. I've already went into a lengthy dis discussion about that. Uh, Knuckles and Shadow were planned to appear in the game, but they were later scrapped for unknown reasons. Would have been pretty cool to see Shadow in there. I uh, don't know what Knuckles would have really done. Probably helped you try to find some of the keys or a, a couple medals here and there. When booting up the PS3 version of the game, some of Sonic's sprites from Sonic 1 are used before the Sega. Uh, model loads up. We've done seen that before. The achievement, I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Reference reference to Ghostbusters. This is the first game where Sonic can attain at least 1,000 ring, rings in a day. In, a day uh, in any stage in this game, the daytime stages, as other games ring cap limit is 99. That's why I thought the ring cap was going to be at 99. You know, in the opening cinematic, it seemed Sega Dreamcast can be spotted where Robotnik pushes the button to fire the laser. It is seen again later when the Egg Dragoon is defeated in the cutscene where Sonic loses his uh, Werehog transformation. A Sega Dreamcast can be seen to the left of Robotnik. The Dreamcast also makes an appearance in the screen in the scene after the Egg Dragoon is defeated. But when Eggman is seen attempting to command Dark Guy to destroy Sonic, the Dreamcast, along with the controller in a game case with Doctor Robotnik's 2D art for Sonic Rush as the cover, can be seen to the right of Robotnik. And the play in the PS3 360 version of the game in the nighttime Spagonia hub to the right in a small lane as perched in the shower can be heard whistling the theme from the teaser trailer. And I showed that off as well. But I guess I can go there since I'm here while I'm uh, talking about it. I'll let you listen to it. Uh, in the PlayStation in nighttime, Missouri Hub elephants can be spotted. However, during the day, two zebras can be spotted. I'll show that off as well. In the first, th this is the first game in the main series to be known by a different name in Japan, where it goes by the name Sonic World Adventure. The, the next is Sonic Generations, which is given subtitles. And I'll go here and I'll let you listen to it. Let me see. I believe all you have to do is just go by this door. I'll turn it up here so you can hear it.
so uh, just figured out you that off since I was just waiting around doing nothing. I will now head to Missouri to show off the elephants and the zebras. Uh, this is uh, the PlayStation 3 and 360 versions of the game. Missouri is a playable level, but in the Wii PlayStation 3 versions only features a boss battle. Similarly, the entire si Empire City was cut from the PS2 version. I already talked about that. The daytime stage theme for Missouri is actually a remix of the ending credit theme of Sonic the Hedgehog 8 bit. The 8 bit version stage, really. Oh, no, that's the stage. I'm not going to go through the stage just to show that off, but that's pretty cool. Uh, the 8 bit version would be the Game Gear version, not the Genesis version. The Genesis version is the uh, is the iconic one. The Game Gear version, however, is kind of like a it's not a, a sequel to it, but it's not as widely known. So you can see there's Winto, so I don't need to talk to him anymore. Try to find these elephants and uh, zebras. There's one zebra. Oh, actually, that's actually a lot of zebras. All right, so we'll wait till night. Uh, this is one only four Sonic games have a fully explorable 3D hub world. The other three are Sonic Adventure, Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, and Sonic Rush Adventure. Sonic Rush Adventure is a 2D game made by Dimps for the Nintendo DS. And there's those two elephants. Uh, seems like there's a lot of elephants. No, I guess that's only two elephants. Uh, that's pretty cool. So, wait. Oh, okay. I thought that was another elephant. All right. So, uh, this is the second game where Sonic transforms into Super Sonic. The beginning of the game. The first one being Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Despite the di divided opinions, this game sold 2.2.45 million copies in little time. Uh, the music in the Adabat Day Day stages is a remix of the background tune in the level Regal Ruin and Sonic R. This is the first Sonic game from the main console series since Sonic. The Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles, not to have Crush 40 to perform the main theme. This is the first main series game not to feature Knuckles the Echidna since Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and the first console game not to feature Sh Shadow the Hedgehog since Sonic Adventure. When rotating the planet, the mountain ele elevations can be seen, but Angel Island is nowhere to be found. Uh, as you can see here, no Angel Island anywhere. Doesn't even clearly show off where Station Square would be at either, but this is more supposed to resemble uh, our Earth rather than the in-game Earth, while it doesn't at all, you know, you can definitely tell that, but it's that's what it's supposed to, by using real-world locations instead of uh, fake locations. Uh, sim similarly, South Island and West Side Island are nowhere in the planet either. South South Island and West Side Island are the islands from Sonic Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2, South, South Island being in Sonic 1 and West Side Island being in Sonic 2. If you look at the new stand in Empire City Hub real closely, you can see a picture of the cover of Sonic 06 on the newsletter. The picture is also visible when looking over the shoulder of someone reading the newspaper in the background. Sky Scraper Scamper Act 1 at the beginning of the stage, you can see highway signs that show some locations which are named some uh, characters. I guess I'll show that newspaper thing off since I'm not doing anything either. Uh, I'll go during the day so you can see it better. Uh, some of the road signs are named after characters that don't appear in the game. These include South Shadow Avenue, Rue Street, E123 Omega Road, Blaze Road, Silver Beach, Seaside Park, Chow Garden, White, uh, Chow Garden West Park, Chow Beans, Soliana Hotel, and Packham, Packham Mac Parking. Tales Amy and Professor Pickle do not seem to have have been affected by Dark Guy. The professor, professor even remarks that he knows his assistant is affected by Dark Guy and that he must do something to help him. The manual incorrectly states that the LT and RT, uh, th 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 those are the triggers, the left trigger and right trigger for the Xbox 360, L2 and R2, PS3 are not used in the day stages, although they are used to perform Sonic Drift. Also in the day stages, day stage section of the manual, if Sonic doesn't t reach the goal within 10 minutes, he'll lose a life, which isn't true in the game itself, meaning the player can take as much time as it needed to clear a stage. This is referenced with classic Sonic games where the player has to finish each act within 10 minutes. Let's try to find a newsstand if I can get really close. See, I was reading a book. That's the Counter of Dreams. It's not a new newsstand. I believe I already got that one a long time ago. Newsstand. see. Ah, okay, here we go. Let me see if I can get close enough. Got it. 
bugging out on me like this. Okay, so there you go. You can see it in the top right of the newspaper. Well, it is uh, not that. It's kind of hard to tell graphics-wise, but that's definitely it. I can. You can definitely tell. So I'll get out of here. Uh. One cutscene contains a reference to the ending of Sonic CD. The cutscene plays after the first exorcism of the game. During the cutscene, Sonic in his warehog state is seen carefully putting Amy on the ground after having saved her with her eyes closed and quickly leaving by swinging across the buildings when, he op when she opens her eyes and turns to look at him. Most, much like how at the ending of Sonic CD, he, uh, Sonic put Amy on the ground and then, while her eyes were still closed, he carefully backed away and then ran off just to show up with her eyes. In 2007, the Aoki Company revealed a scrapped concept art of the upcoming Sonic Unleashed, but by that time, no one actually knew about the game. Perhaps it wasn't going to be Sonic Unleashed. These concepts were revealed privately. Examining the contents of the game disc reveals that some of the regions intended to names were before they were swapped for their current names. It seems some of them, uh, some of them were named after actual locations on Earth: Mykonos, Greece, Great M Mosque, uh, at, that's Aptos, Missouri, Great Mosque of Digini, Digini, Mali, Africa, which is Missouri. Aloska, Alaska, Greenland, Antarctica, Spagonia, Syena, Tuscany, Italy, Spain. I would actually say Spain over Italy, but I'm not too familiar with the, with the architecture of Italy. I've only seen a few Spain buildings, and that's uh, what Spagonia looks like to me. Well, Spagonia does sound, kind of sound Italian, so you know, you never know. Chunan, Great Wall of China. Uh, Chunan, Great Wall of China. Yang Kai Zin, Hayu Road District, Beijing, China. Shamar, Petra, Jordan, Iran, Iraq, Israel. Lebanon, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Empire City, New York City, New York, USA, with Central Park as the hub world, Chicago, Illinois, USA. At about Angkor Wat, Ang Angor, Angkor, Cambodia location, Thailand flag, Eggman Land, Disneyland. <laughs> this is the first time Sonic has been tricked by Robotnik, who actually succeeds in it. This it is a, as it is usually not Knuckles the Echidna who falls for the for his made up stories on the 360 or on the. A PS3 version, you get an A rank on the daytime stage, you complete a day, day mission on the. Uh, you get an A rank on the daytime stage, you complete a day mission, and on the PS2 version, when you get an S rank, a Sonic pose. Sonic's pose accurately resembles that of his pose on the title screen and character selection screen of Sonic Adventure. In, Sonic, uh, in the Xbox 360 version, after the Dark Guy is defeated and the Earth is returning to the normal trip, says, Sonic, you must live. The subtitle says, Sonic, you have to live. Uh, this is the only Sonic game where Sonic never loses the Chaos Symbols throughout the entire game. On the official website, the rating of the trailer showed it as E10+, plus, but the audio is but the audio is E for everyone rating clip. On the official website, the rating oh okay uh, and the we and the PS2 version, the player can access the spin dash move by either pushing the boost button at the right time during takeoff and the day stages are boosted shortly after after running into a dash panel or in the certain areas such as the right uh, such as the right before a loop. The jump animation in the PS2 version is much looser than the one in the PS3 version. The latter is being carried over to the Sonic Colors in both versions of the Sonic Generations. This is the third Sonic game with an E10 plus rating. The two previous, uh, previous games were Shadow the Hedgehog, which was the first, and Sh Sonic the Hedgehog 06, which was the second one. When Dark Gaia transforms into his perf perfect form, green blood can be seen where four arms grow from his sides, which is one of the main reasons why the game was rated E10 and 7 plus in, uh, I'm going to guess, in Europe, as well as a lot of blood will come out in the PS2 version, the P Wii PS2 versions. Uh, there will be a lot more blood when you attack the eyes. On uh, Sonic and Sega all starts racing for iPod Touch, iPhone, and iPad. There is a mission called Sonic Unleashed inside the game. Inside the mission, you play a Sonic destroying wolf like robots, possibly representing Sonic's struggle with his Werehog form. In the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions, there are two achievements named after songs from the British band The Beatles. This is the final s Sonic game on the play PlayStation 2. This is the first console game that used Sonic Boost, Sonic the Hedgehog 06, and Sonic in the Secret Rings, which is a Wii title, had a similar move, but it was not officially the tr true boost. This is the second game to have a different level entrance screen than the rest of the Sonic games. The first was Sonic Adventure. In the demo version of Sonic Unleashed in the 360 game, we'll read Sonic World Adventure through the Japanese title and give a Japanese URL. The Eggman bosses are based on animals of some sort. Egg Beetle and Egg Lancer are both based on beetles. Egg Devil Ray is based on a fish, and Egg Dragoon has similar features to a dragon. In the PS2 version of the game, the, name, the day and night stage times in the cities were a point and click static map, which included the Guy Temple, which was the exploration world. And Level select with his own level music. However, in the PS3, Xbox, uh, PS3, PS3's 360 version, this was moved to bring the hub worlds in. 
For some reason, we're, when Robotnik splits the Earth open under the oceans, fall into the core, uh, which is kind of, you know, just more than I care to look into and uh, r read about that kind of stuff. Oh boy, that was way too long. Ooh, yeah. All right, so let me see. We'll uh, take a look at the options. thought I had actually quit the game completely. I'll take a look at the options and then I'll uh, talk about the... Uh, then I'll show off the achievements and everything. And then... Alright, so... Options. So if you, at any, at any point, you want to start a new game, you can by hitting New Game, Options, uh, Voice, you can either do the English voice, which I have, or the Japanese voice. I prefer English, but you know, you may not like the four kids' uh, voice actors. This is actually the first. Uh, this is actually the last main series Sonic game to actually uh, to feature the four kids' voice actors. After this, they use different voice actors. Uh, subtitles on. I prefer to have them on. It helps, especially when you're doing a let's play. You can actually you will be able to see things a lot better. Uh, you can change the, the music bar, which is I uh, have all the way up sound effects I have all the way up so you can only change music and sound which is actually pretty useful uh, some some of the other console Sonic games they don't actually let you affect the sound and the the sound effects and the music volume which you should always have if you're gonna do a game like this uh, camera up down left right uh, I keep it up down myself brightness you can mess with the brightness I I've never messed with the brightness I'm not sure exactly how it does voice so not too not too big of an options menu, but it's it's pretty good, I guess you could say, especially with the the music bar being able to, to change up and down. So I'll take a look at the uh, trophy collection, uh, the trophies really quickly. 100%. This is the platinum trophy, uh, you, and is unlocked when all the trophies have been completed. Still broken. Restore the first continent. Restore the second continent. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Partial cloudy. Collected half the sun medals. Collect all the sun medals. Collected half the moon medals, full, uh, collected all the moon medals, upgraded all of Sonic the Hedgehog's stats to their maximum levels, upgraded all of Sonic the Warehog's stats to their maximum levels, uh, getting the hang of things, achieved an S rank with Sonic, with Sonic the Hedgehog for the first time, achieved an S rank with Sonic the Warehog for the first time, completed all missions for a, towns, for, for a single townsperson, like the Smackdown, having mastered the stomp technique, having mastered the wall jump technique, mat, air boost, light speed dash. Combat level 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, talk to all the townspeople. Hungry, hungry hedgehog. Got every type of food, which is bought every type of food. Cleared uh, Ace Pilot. Cleared Act 1 of Tornado Defense without taking any damage. Day Tripper. Cleared all the Sonic uh, stages, which is all the Act 1s for every continent. Hard Day's Night. Sonic Warehouse stages. Again, all, all the Acts. Act 1, 2, 3 for every stage. Done the Exorcist Span Wagon. Exercised everyone. Gyro with Relish. Cleared all Hot Dog Stand Missions and Aptos. Every single one for both day and night, all the way to level three. Pig in a blanket, uh, Spagonia, exotic toppings, Missouri, uh, Chanan, iced hot dog, Haloska, Shamar, uh, Empire City, Adabat, Eggman Land. First time customer bought a product from Windows, so you shouldn't have. Give a souvenir to the professor. That's enough. Seriously, give all the souvenirs to the professor. Hedgehog cleared the Louis Montaigne missions in Empire City and the Anna missions in Missouri. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Complete the Mark Antonio missions in Spagonia. BFS become best friends with Chip, which is all you have to do is just give him enough food, and that will tell you how to do. Uh, you know, you'll see the. You have to think of him like a little kid. Yeah, getting like uh, sweet, or sweeter stuff. Some of the hot dogs you can give him. You can give him every other, every type of hot dog except for the scorcher hot dog. But I definitely suggest trying to stay more towards foods that kids would like. Speeding ticket reach the goal of Arid Sands Act One as Sonic within two, 250, which is. Uh, actually, pretty easy, you know. Once you know those two uh, locate uh, shortcut locations, uh, uh, Combo King achieved 10,000 total combos. Ring Leader collected 5,000 rings. Knockout Brawler defeated 1,000 enemies. Blue Meter reached the goal of Windmill Isle Act 2 as Sonic within uh, two minutes 35 seconds, which is actually pretty easy. You know, if you know where the where most of the, where the majority of the uh, where the majority of the uh, shortcuts are. But anyway, that's it. That's everything in the game. 
I'm happy I'm finally done with that. I do apologize for not being able to show off all of the hot dog missions and not showing off some of the, the NPC missions. Some of those didn't matter. I wanted to focus more on the uh, mission characters rather than just the story progression characters. I know some people like that, some people don't. I mean, I personally don't like that. But anyway, I thank you for watching. Next, we will be, we would uh, tackle some of the uh, 2D Sonic games for the. Uh, for the main consoles, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Episode 1. Uh, thank you for watching. It won't be a challenge of the video. Uh, they will all start up the challenge of the videos again once I do. Once I start uh, Part 1 for Sonic 04, or uh, Sonic 4, uh, Sonic Episode 4. Until then, later, everyone.